Will you welcome my beautiful bride? I love her a lot. I even give, let her use my phone. That's real love right there, guys. That's good. Okay. Well, Father, I just thank you for Jen. Father, I thank you for the way that you speak to her, God. God, thank you for the word that is inside of her. And I pray that you anoint her words, God, with your spirit as she shares with us this, uh, this today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good afternoon. <laughs> I forgot what time it is back there. It's good to see you all. Okay, seriously, we're going to have soon. I need to plan this. I want to preach with her in the background the whole time, like just hitting the keys at the right time. We're going to plan this. We're going to do it. Man, I love it. It's the right moment. She just get all Pentecostal back there on me, and come on, it'll be good. I'm into it. Well, welcome, everybody. We're glad you're here this morning. I don't know if we did this, but do we have any, anybody visiting for the first time today? We did that already? Did I miss that? Where was I? I didn't get to say hi. Wait, wait. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Anybody else? I missed it. Sorry. Welcome. We're glad you guys are here. Um, how many of you were here last week when Ben shared? Wasn't that so good? How many of you got in just encouraged with that word? You're like, I'm back in the fight. I'm in the fight. It's such a good word. We're so excited with, um, like Kona was saying, just with what God is doing um, all over the world, truly, in just so many different places and the move of his spirit and what a powerful just testimony of what's happening in the Middle East and just the move of God that's happening. And um, so we, we're, we're pretty excited about that. Well, um, I have a word this morning. And... Um, Something we're going to actually take the next couple of weeks and we're going to be talking about this. But um, God has been speaking to us as a team, as a community for a while about this and kind of just been wrestling through, like, how do we, how do we really do this? How does this work? And um, I want to talk this morning about being the salt, being the salt of the earth. And this is a huge piece of who we are. This is, you know, just as, our, as a community, we're not here to play church. We're here to be the, the living, powerful hands and feet of Jesus in the earth. We are here to put Jesus on display. We are here to model the love of God to the world and, and truly be the church. And so we've been in this wrestle as a community, and there's just more and more that's stirring in our hearts about it, this is our year. This is our year expression to truly be salt and light, to truly infiltrate into society and bring change and healing and restoration and so we're excited. Um, we're going to be talking about that in the next couple of weeks. But I'm going to start with a very well-known verse, Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the salt of of the earth. Jesus never casually threw words around. That's right. He was always deeply, deeply intentional. Every time he spoke, deeply intentional. And he intentionally chose this word salt to define you, to describe who you are. And so we're going we're gonna to really look at that. But I want to give you the full context here. If you have your Bibles, Matthew 5. We're going to start right at the beginning. This is the famous Sermon on the Mount. This is Jesus teaching his disciples what it looks like to be a kingdom person, what it looks like to be a follower of Christ. He's explaining the culture of the kingdom. He's explaining your personal characteristics as a follower of Christ. He's speaking to you about who you are in this passage. And it says, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. 
Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Yeah. I love this passage. Yeah. You know, it's like you just took a super in-depth personality test and you just got the results back. <laughs> or it's like you just did a, an extensive DNA test and you just get the results back. And you read it and you begin to go, oh my gosh, this is who I am. I didn't even know this was a part of my heritage. I didn't even know that was how I'm wired. This is the results of your DNA test. This is who you are. This is who we are. If you are a follower of Christ, the one who created you looks at you and says, I'm about to break it down. This is who you are. You are the salt of the world. You don't have to try to be something. You don't have to try to produce something. It's just who you are. You are the light of the world. This is my nature in you. It's how you're designed. It's how you're wired. It's how you're created. This is who you are. There's no contest. There's no, you know, showdown about this. This is the truth of who you are. You are the salt of the world. You are the light of the world. That's terrifying and amazing, right? And if you'll notice each one of these, which I think it's interesting because if we're going to figure out how to be the salt of the world, I think there's so many clues in this passage. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Right? He's, he's giving us clues as to how to be the salt. And I think sometimes we've wanted the kingdom fruit, but we're not willing to plant the kingdom seed. And we're wondering, why aren't we blessed? Why isn't the church in America blessed like it should be? Because it doesn't say, blessed are the cool. <laughs> You've noticed, right? Blessed are those in the really skinny jeans and the deep Vs and the big glasses. I'm sorry, that's kind of a mean jab. It, it's just true, though. What are we trying to emulate? We think if we're more cool, more people will come to God. That, what? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Not those who have it all together, not the rich, not the this. No, those are all fine, but blessed are the poor in spirit. That's the kingdom way. Those who know they need God. Those who know they are nothing outside of God, right? Those who are hungry and teachable. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn, those who grieve over sin, not flirt with it and tolerate it and have it all up in their business. Those who grieve over sin, those who grieve over injustice in the world, not just, oh, we're too busy, turn the channel, I don't want to look at another starving child while I'm eating my dinner. Blessed are those who mourn, who feel the heart of God for humanity, right? Blessed are those who are gentle, not arrogant and rude and judgmental and proud. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, not hunger and thirst for favor and blessings. Hunger and thirst for righteousness, being right before God and right before man. 
You see, we hunger and we thirst for the wrong things, don't we, many times? And then we see, the, we, we see a very small harvest. And I feel like there's this, this call, this awakening of the bride where he, Jesus is just saying, I'm going to tell you who you are. I'm going to remind you who you are. I am going to sing the song over you that I say that you are. You are the salt of the world. You are the light of the world. And to do that, we've got to do it his way, right? And he's outlining so beautiful his way. Blessed are the pure in heart, not agenda, not manipulation. Not I'm using God to get my, my, you know, a name for myself. Right. Or I'm using God to have my dreams fulfilled. Or I'm using God. There's no using God in purity of heart. It's, a, it's all about him. It's all for him. Right? Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. The peacemakers. You know where peacemakers need to be? In places that aren't peaceful. Not running from those places. They run into those places. They run into the mess. They run into the politics. They run into the city government. They run into racial issues. They run into the mess. Not to just start throwing bombs and making a bigger mess. They run into it to peacemake, to heal, to unite. That means they got to get over themselves to get in there and bring people together and heal, right? Blessed are the peacemakers. I love that, for they will be called sons of God. When people look at my life, I want them to say, that one, she's a daughter of God. She looks like her daddy. I don't even need to ask if she's a Christian. I know, I know, I know. I can see it all over her life. She's a peacemaker, right? She's humble, she's merciful. She's hungry and thirsty for righteousness. I love this. This last part, blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. You'll notice that verse doesn't say, blessed are you when you're persecuted for being a religious jerk. It doesn't say that. People come to us and they're like, I'm being so persecuted. And I'm like, tell me the story. And then I hear the story and I'm like, You're not being persecuted for Christ. You're being persecuted because you're being a jerk to people, right? In the name of God. That doesn't work. Now, if you think about who persecuted Christ, sinners love Jesus, right? I mean, people felt known and loved, even in their sin, in the presence of Jesus. Man, he really made the religious know-it-alls who thought they had it all together. He made them uncomfortable, and they persecuted him. You better make sure your persecution's coming from the right direction. (laughs) This is who we are. He's telling us who we are. Salt is who you are. You know, this concept of salt, it's obviously a metaphor, but... Like I said, Jesus didn't just casually choose words. And there's so much meaning in what it means to be the salt of the earth. And, um, you know, these ones that are listening to Jesus, they maybe didn't understand fully what he was saying when he chose that word, but they definitely had a view of what salt was. Maybe a little different than our view today. You know, today every, every one of us probably has salt in our home. Um, it's very easy. It's very accessible. You go down to the store, it's cheap, it's easy. Salt had a different meaning in that day, and I want to look at that for a moment so that you can have some some context for maybe how the disciples hearing this heard that word, okay? So first of all, in Numbers, let's go Old Testament here, Numbers 18, 19. Whatever is set aside from the holy offerings the Israelites present to the Lord, I give to you and your sons and daughters as your perpetual share. It is an everlasting covenant of salt before the Lord for both you and your offspring. Leviticus 2.13. You shall season all your grain offerings with salt. You shall not let the salt of the covenant with your God be missing from your grain offering. With all of your offerings, you shall offer salt. And then 2 Chronicles 13.5. 
Don't you know that the Lord, the God of Israel, has given the kingship of Israel to David and his descendants forever by a covenant of salt? How many of you are like, I never read that in the Bible, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> covenant of salt? What is that? Covenant of salt. So here, hearing, you know, the Sermon on the Mount is all these good little Jewish boys and girls. They, they understood something powerful that maybe we don't have context for. They understood that the people of God were in covenant with God in something called a salt covenant. It represented something. Why would God call them in a covenant of salt? Not only a covenant of salt, but every time they were to bring their offerings, their sacrifices, they had to bring it with salt. Why? Because God's just got a palate for salt? I mean, <laughs> that's strange. Salt represented something in the culture that he wanted to make sure was tied in to every interaction between them and God. Salt, in this era, in this time, salt represented something that was incorruptible. Salt could not be corrupted. Salt was a preservative. It went into something that was decomposing, and it preserved it. Salt didn't get corrupted when you put it in something that was decaying, but the decay began to change. Salt was incorruptible. It was powerful. It was a symbol of life. It was a symbol of of permanence. It was a symbol of um, something that was sustained. Wow. And so when God says we're in a covenant of salt, he's speaking about this, this covenant with mankind that cannot be corrupted, that's pure, that holds through the generations. And so when he says, bring me an offering, but make sure you don't forget the salt. Make sure you remember. Make sure you bring something that, you know, you, you link your heart to the unshakable kingdom. Make sure you don't come with mixture. Right? It was powerful. As early as 550 before Christ, around the time of the book of Ezra, Accepting salt from somebody was synonymous with drawing sustenance or taking pay or being in that person's service. Centuries ago, the Romans contended that salt was the purest of all things because it came from the purest of all elements, the sun and the sea. Salt was something that was very revered in society. It was very um, sought after. In fact, Roman soldiers were partly paid in salt. There's an expression, you're, you know, you're worth your weight in salt. Did you know that even in, in the English word salary comes from the Latin word salarium, meaning payment in salt? Wars, many wars, many wars. I've actually heard, I couldn't verify this, but I, I read a few different places that there are more wars fought over salt than wars fought over gold, historically. Civilizations and royalty sought it out for its great value. And historically, it's always been a highly valued and important substance in society. So when Jesus comes in and he says, you are the salt of the world, that meant something. You have great value. When Jesus called us the salt of the world, he actually, in that moment, fully believed that you and I we're empowered to change the world. He said that intentionally. Here's this thing of great value that will impact its environment, that will change its environment. That is who you are. You are an environment changer. You shift things. You are, you are the revolutionary. You are the one who shifts things. You are the one who turns things around. You are the one who changes the flavor. You are the one who preserves humanity. You are me in you. It's Christ in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. As Christians, we have an identity that cannot be ignored and an influence that can't be neglected. And we're going to have to figure out how to get really intentional about that. Jesus clearly believes and expects the world to be transformed through our lives. 
Now, I want to just, most of us are very obviously very familiar with these things, but I just remind you a few of the things we use salt for. First of all, flavoring. You know, something important to remember with flavoring is that for salt to have its desired influence, it must actually come into contact. I know this is going to sound really simple. Come into contact with whatever needs to be flavored. That means you can't stay in the salt shaker and think you're going to change the world. You actually have to get up in the stuff. You have to get up in the meat. You got to get up in the soup. You got to get up in the stuff. A salt doesn't have any impact sitting in the salt shaker. Ooh, the big bad world out there. We're just going to all cuddle up here and be super Christians. Like, it doesn't work that way. Salt was meant to be poured out, dispersed. Right? For a long time, the church, we've, we've tried to serve the world a big, fat spoonful of salt. We're like, take it, take it. You know, and the world's like, I don't want it. Christian everything, you know? You do it, we'll make it Christian. We'll do it, you know, cheesy and just call it Christian. And we just Christian everything. We try to Christianize everything. And, and we, we forget the reality. Salt is not meant to be served in a big, fat, heaping, you know, teaspoonful. That's not palatable. Salt has to immerse, immerse and spread out. And together, that creates the flavor. You were made to go in places that are kind of rotten and kind of stinky and kind of, you know, maybe not so flavorful. That's where you are designed to be. You know, for a long time, the church in America, we try to get everybody into church, and we're just trying to get everybody out of church. We're trying to get everybody, I mean, coming to church is good, but go out and be the church, right? Go out and be salt. Go out and be light. This is who we are. This is the gospel. Something else, when you're understanding flavoring, one little speck of salt isn't going to do a whole lot. That's the truth. Our impact and our influence really greatly lies in how well we can work together. It's you and me and you and all of us together. It's a city on a hill, right? It's all of us together integrating into society, integrating into business, integrating into education, integrating into politics, integrating into, you know, civil jobs in our community, integrating into every medicine, all these areas. And together, we are salt. And then together, the flavor changes. This isn't a one-man show. This isn't the, oh, the man of God. This is the bride of Christ, the sons, the daughters, the kings, the priests, all of us taking our place, getting in the gate, taking our place, and being who God has called us to be. That is how we're going to shift some things in culture. That is how we're going to shift some things in society. You know, the church is not meant to be a club. It's a city. It's a city for the world to see what race relations can look like under the lordship of Jesus, what business can look like under the lordship of Jesus, what family can look like under the lordship of Jesus. We're meant to put the beauty of God on display. That's who we are. That's what salt and light does. Now, salt is also a preservative, right? It stops decay. The reality is, you know, I've said this already, but we're meant to be in places that there, there, is, there will be destruction and decay if we're not present being light and love and hope and truth, right? Yeah. We can't run from those places. The church has long tried to, you know, remove themselves from those places, and we've done the enemy a great hand. We've forfeited our right, our identity, our authority. We've said, take it. It's too messy. And we are designed and wired to be in places that will 100% decay if you're not present. The reality is everything kind of just, I know it's kind of a not super great news, but everything kind of just falls apart if left to itself, yep. right? If you just sat down all day and ate donuts all day long, your body would just be to fall apart, right? You have to actively work to keep it healthy, to stop that process from decaying. There's, there's action involved. It's like you get married, you love each other. Let me tell you what, just because you love each other, if you don't tend to that relationship, that thing's going to start to fall apart. Things really, it will just begin to just fall apart. It takes action, it takes intentionality to work on that, to keep it healthy, right? Yeah. 
It's the same way in the world. We, you know, if we're not involved in the world, for real, involved, and, and working for the peace and prosperity of the city, then we look and we go, it's just all falling apart. It's going to hell in a handbasket. And God's like, really? Get out there, you know? Like, <laughs> yes, like this is, this is what we were created for. Come on. You see a mess, you're like, mm, my time to shine. And you walk right into it. Yeah. That's what you're created for. Yeah. You see chaos, you walk right, don't run from it, you walk right into the middle of it. I'm the peacemaker, here we go. I'm the salt. I'm going to step up in this, and I am going to preserve. I'm going to preserve what God has for this neighborhood, for this workplace, for this industry, for this city. I am here to preserve what God has, and I'm going to fight to see his dreams come forward. Come right? And you begin to take your action. You begin to take your place. You begin to be salt. Salt also melts ice and snow. We don't know anything about that here in L.A., but um, <laughs> I've heard. I've heard. But I think it's interesting to note, ice is put on the hard, cold, frozen places, and it melts it just by being there. Come on. Just melts the, the ice, melts the hard places. Ice, I mean, you know, salt doesn't do some fancy dance and blow a shofar to make the ice melt. It just, just its presence. I mean, you can do that. But it, it's not like it has to, like, you know, it's not about trying to perform, is what I'm saying. Yeah. It's not about, like, if I do the right thing and this and this and this. It's, it's just, if you carry heaven, yeah. hard hearts will be melted in your presence. Yeah. That is the truth. Yeah. When you carry the atmosphere of heaven, hard, difficult situations begin to just kind of come into order in your presence. Because you're the salt of the world. That's who you are. That's who he says you are. My God is not a liar. So, <laughs> Salt is also used for traction. You know, when they're, you're trying to get a vehicle or something moving and it's slippery or whatever, you put salt on the ground. Yeah. And salt provides traction to get something off the ground that's struggling to get off the ground. Wow. Your presence in an environment, in a workplace, in a business, in a whatever, in an industry, you're there to provide some traction to get what the Holy Spirit's trying to release in that place off the ground. Amen. It's a part of who you are. You provide some grit and traction in, in people's lives around you to help God get some things moving that he's trying to move in their life. Salt is also odorless. And I think that's important to note. <laughs> Salt doesn't smell like agenda. Salt doesn't smell like negativity. Salt doesn't smell like fear. Right? Salt also affects the texture in food. It produces tenderness. It changes the feeling, the experience, the palatability of, 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 of in food. So when you're present, when we're truly being salt, one thing I want you to think, Jesus could have picked any word. He could have called you the flowers. I mean, he could have called you the, you know, I don't know, the daisies of the world. He chose salt. He made salt, so I'm pretty sure he knows all about how it works, right? Salt present in food, it makes something more tender. It tenderizes just by being there. It softens the texture, changes the texture. Not only that, but in meats, it's a binder. So it affects the structure of proteins and allows them to retain more water, which keeps meat moist while cooking. The presence, mmm, mmm. Somebody's like, yeah, sister. Pot roast going at home, waiting for me. Salt, listen to this, the presence of salt helps something retain water when it goes through the fire. When somebody's going through the fire or something's going through the fire, the presence of salt allows that thing not to get burnt up, but to retain the flavor and the water and the juice and to stay moist and to stay in that place even though it's going through the fire. The presence of salt does that. It's who you are. 
Salt promotes healing. It draws out infection. It both irritates and heals. It cleanses, it purifies, and my favorite thing about salt, hands down, salt creates thirst. You won't even know you're thirsty until you eat something salty and you're like, I am so thirsty, <laughs> right? It provokes thirst. This is who we are. We are designed by God to provoke thirst in those around us, in the world around us. Now, I, I'm telling you, I want you to hear this because this has got to get in our spirit. It's one thing to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you actually provoking thirst in people's lives? Let's talk about that, right? Are we doing this? Or do our lives look like everybody else around us? And they're like, cool, I don't need what you got, right? Like, when you are actually truly connected to God and his life, his peace, his power, his truth, his love is flowing through you, you don't have to try. See, we, we try to make people thirsty. Look how cool we are. Look at the song and dance we do. Like, we, we're trying to make people thirsty, and they're, like, not buying it. Yeah. That's right. You don't have to try to make people thirsty when you're truly salt. Yeah. When you're truly salt, people are going to get thirsty. I mean, that is the end of it. People are going to get thirsty, right? When we're walking in the love of God for real, when we are putting the good news of Jesus on display, when we walk in peace that's beyond our understanding, when we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, people want to know what you have. People get hungry for that. Hey, how are you so peaceful? How are you so happy? How do you always have the best ideas? Why is your business thriving? Why do you always have strategy? Why aren't you freaking out? Why do you have joy in the midst of your storm? Who, how, what is that? Where do you, what is that? I want that. You see, that provokes thirst in people. And I feel this stirring in my spirit of the church in America. It is time we return to the undiluted gospel. It is time we return to the undiluted gospel. Because it is time for salt and light, for real, to be, for us to truly become who God has called us to be. If we're going to see the kingdom fruit, we've got to do it the kingdom way. We've got to be merciful. We've got to be hungry for, for righteousness. We've got to be humble. We've got to, you know, we've got to do it the kingdom way. Because it's time to be salt. You know, the reality is, is pure sodium chloride does not lose its saltiness. There's no such thing as unsalty salt. The pure thing never stops being salty. But in Jesus' day, they got their salt from the Dead Sea, which was not pure. It was mixed with other minerals. There was some dirt and some junk and some minerals and some other stuff all mixed up in their salt. So what this verse is referencing is that it doesn't even taste like salt. So what use is it just to be thrown out and stepped on by the world? And I wonder, I wonder how many people in our generation got dished some salt that doesn't even taste like salt. And they think, I have, there's no reason for Christianity. There's no region, reason for religion. There's no reason for the church. It doesn't change the flavor of anything in my life. Right? You can't come saying, you know, preaching a gospel of good news, but have no solutions for people's lives and issues in society. Right? You can't have salt that doesn't taste salty. There's no point in that. And I feel this call of the Holy Spirit to us as the bride of, it is time to get salty. It's time to get real salty. I think you should look to your neighbor and say, I'm about to be salty and lit. I'm about to get real salty and real lit. Holy Spirit version of that. <laughs> right? It's time. It's time the church gets salty and lit, for real. We're going to redeem that. 
You know what Jesus is saying in this, there can't be mixture. The world is hungry for the real deal. Not just the world, you. You in this room, you hunger, whether you recognize it or not, for the real deal. You hunger. It's who you were, it's what you're made for. You don't want some fake, powerless Christianity. You are, your soul longs for true connection with God. You were designed for real connection with God. Union with God. It's who you are. You were designed to see the power of God. You were designed to do great things in your day for the glory of God. It's who you are. You cannot escape your own DNA. Right? John 15, I love this. You guys know this story probably. The story of the vine and the branches. John 15, I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Say much fruit. fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Say nothing. nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. I love this. Because you're salt, because you're light, it's who you are. It's the desire of God that we bear much fruit in our lives. You see, this whole concept of, I'm just going to live a little quiet life over here, nameless, faceless. (laughs) God's like, yeah, where do you see that in scripture? You don't. You don't take a light and put it under a basket. That's right. You put it on the lampstand. You do your good deeds in front of others so that all people can see the glory of God. Yeah. You put Jesus on display. Like, this is who we are. That's right. doesn't mean you're going to be arrogant and a weirdo. You're going to be humble. You're going to be meek, right? Yeah. You're going to do the beatitudes. That's going to be the posture of your heart. Amen. But we have to figure out how the reality is I am called to bear much fruit. But here's... Here's some freeing news for you. If you're like, oh my gosh, that sounds like a lot of work. (laughs) Right? Anybody else know what I'm talking about? You see, if you, you don't have to sit here and try to grow fruit, like grow a watermelon. You know, like it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to do that. And then whatever you birth by yourself, you have to sustain. And that's exhausting. Right? So, Here's this beautiful clue of how we do this. We get to remain. We get to remain in his love. We get to stay connected to him. We get to drink him in. We get to drink in truth. We get to, this is how I fight my battles. We just stay in that place, right? You stay in that place of worship. You stay in that place of connection with him. And from that place, as you remain, fruit just happens in your life. Fruit just happens. I feel like the church for so long has worked so hard to try to produce fruit. And then we're tired and we don't really have much fruit. And I feel this call back to, guys, it's come back. Remain in me. We can do nothing outside of him. He loves our gifts. He loves our strengths. But let me tell you, if if for a second we think we can do anything with those things without him, we've totally missed it. This is all about him. Unless Christ builds the church, right? This is about him. This is his glory. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. This is about lifting him up. This is about putting him in his place. We get to remain. We get to plug in. We get to be in real union with God. And I'm going to tell you, there is no way we're going to be able to do what we're called to do and be who we're called to be if we forget this piece. You cannot live on somebody else's connection to God. You cannot be sustained on your girlfriend's relationship with God. 
You cannot be sustained because of your parents' relationship with God. Amen. You can't be sustained with your pastor's relationship with God. Amen. Every one of us plugging in, drinking him in, connecting with God, communing with God, knowing him, hearing him, being in the word. I'm telling you, he wants to fill you. He wants to strengthen you. There's people in this room that are tired. He wants, to, he wants to take that weight off of you and teach you how to walk with him, how to work with him. He wants to carry that load for you. You're not meant to carry that load. You're not meant to feel this, oh, my gosh, I have to fix the whole world. Like, no, Jesus fixes the world. We just get to love him. We get to plug into him. and We get to do whatever he says to do, right? We just get to stay in that place of union with him. It's coming back to the undiluted gospel. I think we make it way too complicated. And he's like, just bring it in real simple. It's you and me. It's right here, right here, right here. And when we get, we get in this place, we go, God, I want nothing more than you. All of a sudden, what do you know? We're being salt. We're changing. We're changing the environment around us. We're changing the flavor. And it's time. It is time. I, I'm so stirred in my spirit. I, I just feel like, man, last week Ben called us and back into the fight of faith, right? And I, I feel like the next step of that this week, it's like, and, and that is, it is time, Expression 50, it is time for us to truly be the salt. It is time for us to truly get into these various arenas of society and begin to pull heaven down. It is time to see transformation in this city, in this nation, in the issues of injustice in the world. It's time. We are not victims. We are powerful. We are sons and daughters of the living God. This is who we are. We got the DNA test back. It's who we are. There's no arguing a DNA test. We know whose we are. We know the DNA, the blood that runs through our veins. We are the salt. I'm going to read something to you. All around us, we see humanity crying out for hope. We feel heaven longing to break in. It's time. It's time for transformation. To not just talk about it, but to stir it up. To birth it. To bleed it into existence. It's time we become the ones we've been waiting for. Ambassadors of love. Agents of change. It's time for a new sound to rise, for fearless voices of hope that are ready to put the brilliance of Jesus on display. It's time for love to grow so loud that injustice and pain have no choice but to cease. It's time. We, we have felt in this season, as we've been praying, this word has just been stirring in us. We've got to do something. As a church, as a community, we, we're committed to being on this journey to truly figure out how we take our place in society, how we truly are the salt, how we truly release heaven and put Jesus on display, and we want to help the greater body of Christ get there. So as we've been praying, one of the, one of the things that, um, <coughs> that's been in our heart that we felt that we're to do is um, we are going to do a big event this next year. We're doing a big event called Salt, Be the Salt. And we are so stirred about this. We actually have something for you. You can give these out. We have something for you. We felt the Lord say, you know, when we first moved to L.A. as a, as a church um, over a decade ago, we did a, a few, like, conferences, and it was good, and it was really powerful things that came out of those times. But we really haven't done anything uh, on that level in like a decade. We felt God say, it's time. It's time for you guys to use your voice again. It's time, for, it's time for you guys to stir something up. And we're like, okay, Lord, and our people really aren't conference type people, you know? And, um, and we felt like God say, this is so much more than a conference. It's time to rally people together and infuse them with vision, with testimonies, with hope about how truly to be the salt, looking at different arenas of society where people are bringing massive impact in medicine, in politics, in education, in entertainment industry. How do we truly become the salt and be the salt together? And so we're having an event called Be the Salt, and we are so excited about it and wanted to tell you guys about it first. Um, 
Actually, let's, let's watch the video. I have, we have a sh turn your, your attention towards the screens. I want you to see this. Is Caden just an empty term? Something taught and something learned? He prayed to heaven, here and now. He waits for us to pull it down. ready to be the salt? Yeah. Yeah. All right, come on. Well, we want to invite you first, um, before we make this public, we want to tell you about what we're doing. And so May 3rd through 5th, we are all gathering and we're going to open it up. We're going to be at Angela's Temple, which is so significant. And if you've never been to Angela's Temple, incredible history with uh, Sister Amy Simple McPherson, but just the incre incredible move of God. First mega church built in the U.S. actually. That over 40 million um, people come through at the turn of the century. I'm just phenomenal. The healings, the miracles, the salvations. Crazy, crazy, crazy um, historical location here in Los Angeles. Phenomenal move of, of the Holy Spirit. Not only was there power encounters and healings and I mean literally ambulances when they would pick up people they would say do you want to go to the hospital or do you want to go to the temple wow. and people would decide and people would be brought to Anderson to be healed out of their cots raised up out of their wheelchairs I mean there's all these you know you can go to the museum it's phenomenal what happened there but not only was there a major move and power of the Holy Spirit and revival one thing I love about the history of this building which is why we chose to have this here these guys were so involved in society. What was birthed out of this location? So involved. I mean, right, right in Echo Park. They fed more people during the Great Depression than the entire United States government. Talk about the church taking their place, right? Talk about the church bringing transformation. When earthquakes hit, there were first responders every time. You know, people from, from Angel Simple, they would just show up. And they were there just bringing healing on the radio, taking, you know, going after media and all these things. Truly, what a legacy in our city of people who were salt, salt, and shifted, shifted the city, shifted the climate and various industries. And so we're going back there. We're going to dig up some salt covenant. We're going to dig up some salt wells in our city. We're going to remind ourselves who we are. It's going to be a phenomenal time. We have incredible speakers coming. There will be more to be announced, but so far we've got Christine Kane. You guys know Christine Kane? We love Christine Kane. We've got Dr. Ed Silvoso, who's just a legend. He's such a father in transformation and, and taking the kingdom of God into the marketplace and business. He's phenomenal. Sean and us. We've got Bethel Music coming. Anthony Evans. We love Anthony Evans. Expression 58 Worship. And more. There will be many more um, to be announced. We're going to be doing a panel, and, and we're just going to be interviewing different people who are really being the salt in their industries. And so it's going to be a time to be inspired and encouraged and just provoked. And so we're really excited. But if you have your phones, um, go to www.bethesalt.la. Bethesalt.la. Don't even think about getting on Facebook. Don't even think. Holy Spirit, I pray conviction. Just kidding. Be the salt LA. You guys there? I think it freaks out maybe if we all try at the same time. Is that what's happening? It's like, whoa. Okay. 
Well, at least you have it there in your browser. But um, be the salt LA. This is the website. You can get all the information. Um, you can register on the website there. Tell people about it. Send it to your family and friends that want to come. They're like, hey, I've been wanting to check out your church. Come to this event we're doing in May, right? This would be a good thing to bring people to from the region. Um, also, if you're, it, you, I would encourage you to go on to Instagram and follow um, the conference Instagram, which is, is going to be um, be the salt underscore LA. Okay? So you can follow us on Instagram to be getting updates and seeing you know, more of the, just what's happening and speakers and different things on there. But we wanted to announce this to you guys because we're about to go public with this. Um, so before we open this up to the general public, we want to just get all of our family there. We want you guys to be there. We've got like prime seating. We're like, we want all of our E58 people up in the front doing what we do, worshiping our faces off, and just setting the atmosphere in the place. And so we are offering, just for this week, we are offering a super discount rate. It's a, th it's a Thursday night, all day Friday, all day Saturday. But um, we're offering just for E58, and I guess whoever you tell, but $119. Um, just for this week, just for our family, and then the price is going to go up next week, and we're going to open up to the general public. So we wanted to tell you guys first, we only actually have 200 seats available at that price, so it's first come, first serve. Um, and we, after service, you can come to this table over here, these lovely ladies, and they can sign you up um, with a discount rate, or you can do it on your phone right now um, and join us. But we want to encourage you guys. We want all of us to be there. We want to go after this together. We want to get on this journey. We're going to be taking the next two weeks. We're going to be talking about salt more with Hona and Sean. But we're going to get on this journey together to for real figure out, okay, we're not here to play games. We are not here to play games. We are going to see this city transformed in the name of Jesus. We are going to see industries transformed. We're going to see culture shift. We are, we're going to look back and go, because we were the salt, look what happened. Because we refused to let go of this journey, look what happened. Look where God took us. And so I, I'm just, I am excited for us. Our spirits are just like, come on. Come we on. just feel the backing of heaven in this. There's been so much momentum and favor. And we're like, it is time. And we're going to be front and center, E58. And we're going to call everybody else in. I mean, you can see a couple thousand. We're going to call everybody else in. And we're going to figure out, we're going to call the rest of the body together. Of how are we doing this? And let's go after this. And so you guys, we're so pumped. But if you want to sign up, you can do that today. Um, also, there's some, some free posters back there, I think, too. Some cool posters for anybody. First, first ones that come, all right? Well, I'm going to pray for us as we close. Will you guys stand? All right. Jesus, we love you. God, I'm so grateful that you didn't tell us we're like cauliflower or something lame, God. I'm so grateful, Lord, that we are change makers, God, that we are not powerless. I'm so grateful, Lord, that we are infused with your nature, that we get to put your beauty and your goodness on display. I'm so grateful, God, that you're with us. God, that we don't have to somehow muster something up. God, we just get to lean into you. We get to drink you in, God. We get to become like you. And we just get to release you through our life everywhere we go. God, we just put a stake in the ground today as a community. We are the salt. It's who we are. And we're not backing down, and we won't apologize for it, God. And we're not shrinking back. But God, we give you permission to rewire us, to rework us, to do whatever you need to do, God, in our lives so that we can give you the most glory, God, that we can bring the most impact, the most life, the most healing, the most restoration to society, God. We open ourselves up to you, God. We say, we want to do it your way, God. We want to be blessed by doing it your way. So God, will you teach us your way? We submit to your process. We submit, God, to, to just your wisdom. And we ask that you would move through us, God. Yeah. We stand in agreement this morning. And, Lord, we're asking for a reformation. We're asking for a move of your spirit, God, in our nation, in this city, yeah. in the nations of the world, God. Yeah. I thank you, Lord, that you bring great harvest. You bring great fruit. And so, Jesus, we, we just run into your heart this morning. And we ask for your will to be done. 
God, I pray that you would make everyone in this room so salty and so lit this week, God, in your presence. So salty and so lit, God, with your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you.